So this exhibition is called Data's Entry, and it's my first solo survey exhibition at a museum. It's here at the Para Museum, and I'm very proud to present it. The works in the exhibition um, all deal with the relationship between humans and machines, and I'm especially interested in the kinds of technologies that we use in everyday life. So things, not necessarily the highest technology, but often things that are kind of middle-brow technologies, like USB gadgets, computer mouses, printers, robotic vacuums, um, auto-responding email scripts, and of course, keyboards. I created three new works in this exhibition, two of which are using the QWERTY keyboard key. Um, the idea for this, and this is, one of them is the title work of the exhibition called Data's Entry. It's a, it's a performance. The idea of this is that I'm thinking about the term data's entry in two ways. One is typing at the keyboard. So we are constantly entering data. This is the, like really the new form of labor is producing data. People are typing on their keyboards, they, whether they are working or whether they are on Facebook or on Instagram or what have you, producing data, whether it's about something external or whether it's about themselves, that production of data is being tracked, it's being saved, it's being captured. So data entry on one hand means this kind of work of data entry. On the other hand, data's entry means that data has entered into our world. Um, I'm interested in how data has a physical presence in our world, although we are so often prone to think of it through metaphors like cloud computing, which seem to suggest that data would be weightless or immaterial. I want to show how data is now in our lives, it has a presence, and we need to contend with it. My piece in the Anatolian Weights and Measures collection is called Cloud Profiles Weightless Measures. And it's a, it's a continuation of the work that I've done on big data and data in this show. So what I was thinking about that really captured my imagination with the Weights and Measures collection is that these objects are the beginnings of standardization. The idea of the Weights and Measures is that you have an object that, for example, weighs a certain amount. So it weighs one dirham or one gram. And you can reproduce that standard through another object that weighs one dirham or one gram in another city, in another country. This allows for the beginnings of civilization in many ways, or society, social contracts, in that there's a standard that people agree to. So what I love about these objects is not only how fascinating they are as physical artifacts, but also the fact that these objects are in many ways social. They serve a social purpose. What I think is so interesting is that the current contemporary incarnation of weights and measures of this kind of standardization is taking place within data. We've gone from understanding an equivalent gram in one city to an equivalent gram in another city to now it's an equivalent bit in one location and an equivalent bit in another location. So these values transfer across distances. And I'm very interested in how, with data, that process has become apparently weightless. So we've gone from these beautiful stone and metal objects that have a, a clear embodiment and weight to something that is pure measure. Data, etymologically, means the measure of the world. So it's just about the numbers. It's not about meaning, which would be information. And it's not about um, any kind of weight, any kind of embodiment. So with my animations, Cloud Profiles, Weightless Measures, I've 3D scanned a dancer who is in a position that is then rendered twice, once to look like data, and this gives the appearance of the weightlessness of the cloud that we associate with data. And then again, uh, to have a, a stone or metal texture, and that gives the, the uh, connection to those objects in the collection. It's meant to look like one of the objects. So these, um, these two forms, these two non-human forms, data and a material object, are morphing back and forth in the animations. So one of the things that I'm really interested in and that I think data is so important for understanding is that what I believe is happening now is that there's really a narrowing of the gap between humans and objects such as machines. 
Um, we see this in philosophy in the new object-oriented and speculative realist and new materialist philosophies. But we also see this in everyday life when both um, artificial intelligences are increasingly coming into play in everyday activities, but also are continuing human biases. There was an article um, in today's news about an artificial intelligence that uh, was asked to judge a beauty pageant. 60,000 web viewers um, ended up submitting their photos. And what ended up coming out is that it turned out that this artificial intelligence was programmed to prefer whiteness. So in fact, it's a racist artificial intelligence beauty pageant judge. And I think that these technologies often carry human biases. It's, it's um, a sort of fallacy to believe that these, ob these objects that we create do not contain our own biases. On the flip side of this, we see humans that are acting more and more like machines as labor conditions become increasingly regimented, increasingly totalized. So on two fronts, both the advancement of artificial intelligence and automation technologies, and on the other hand, the ways that those automation technologies change conditions for human labor, often making them inhuman. On both of those fronts, we see a narrowing of the gap between humans and machines. What I'd like to see, however, is a different type of relationship, one that is more collaborative, one that is more cooperative, one that involves uh, conditions of modesty and feelings of sympathy. I hope that the works in this exhibition help to foster that type of relationship.